Why are they doing that? What's going on here? It's Curious John. What is he curious about today? Over the past few years, Taiwan has turned to its neighbors in Southeast Asia in search of new workers, new trade opportunities, and new friends. Looking southward has become serious business as immigrants and migrant workers fill empty spots in Taiwan's workforce and relaxed visa rules bring in more tourists. When it comes to looking south, you can't get much more geographically literal than looking towards the Philippines. The Philippines is Taiwan's nearest Southeast Asian neighbor. The two are only separated by the Basher Channel, just off Taiwan's southern tip. It's probably not surprising, then, that people from the Philippines form one of the larger Southeast Asian communities that's grown up in Taiwan in recent years. For the past 12 years, Filipina immigrant Jen has watched as this community has grown. She appears regularly on Taiwanese TV to talk about the Philippines, and she's become a YouTube ambassador as well, bridging the gap between the Philippines and Taiwan with her channel Hello Phil Thai, the Filipino voice. She joins us today for a look at what brings Filipinos and Filipinas to Taiwan and how they live here. So, uh, first of all, can you tell us uh, something about around how many people from the Philippines are, are living in Taiwan these days? It increased dramatically for almost 12 years of being here in Taiwan. I would say it's approximately 160,000. From 2010, it's almost doubled. Do they mostly yeah. come from the same areas of the Philippines? No. You know, Philippines has 7,100 islands and islets. Many of the people from the Philippines coming in Taiwan are mostly from the different parts of the Philippines. And what yeah. jobs do they come to do? Well, I tried to do my research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the report said many of the Filipino workers coming in here are for the electronic company, factory workers, and the rest are for the caregiving and domestic helpers. And you also mentioned new immigrants. Do many of them tend to stay here long term and, and start families or set down roots? When we talk about residents coming in here, like in marriage or uh, like they migrate here, they would stay here for forever if they like it here. But for those who are working in Taiwan, many of them would stay here for three years. That's for the contract. And if their employers or companies would like to have them back, the most that they could stay here is until 15 years that's in the law. Do you know why that cap is in place? Is there any explanation for that? Because it seems like, why would you turn away skilled workers? The first reason would be just about the choice of the employer or the company. Because there are a lot of people applying for a job here in Taiwan. So if they wanted to have a new employee, then they have their choice. But then those who have outstanding performances, which is often that way. That's why there are a lot of Filipinos here stay for like almost 6 to 15 years. Yeah, so it's really about the performance, and many of the companies would love to retain Filipino workers first because they understand English, especially in, in factories, and they, they like how they work. So those who only stay for like three years, most of them, their companies are not doing well, and they don't want to stay longer in Taiwan. Have you heard of any attempt to get rid of this 15-year cap so that people who know their jobs well and contribute to their companies can stay longer? <laughs> Very honest, there are a lot of Filipinos, especially those who are trusted by their employers, those who are in, in the house. Many of them would want it to stay longer, but unfortunately, the government only allows 15 years, which is really good. It used to be nine years only. Just recently, it becomes 12, and then they added another three years, so that's 15. But why do Filipino people choose to come to Taiwan when a lot of our neighbors are, are near neighbors, especially places like Japan or South Korea or Singapore, have much higher salaries? Because it's faster to apply in Taiwan. The rest of those uh, tiger economies in Asia, let's say Korea and Japan, they're very strict with regards to applicants and allowing them to work in their country. Mm -hmm. It was really difficult, like twice as difficult. That's the reason, main reason why more Filipinos are coming in Taiwan than in Korea or Japan. And even like Singapore, it's also an ASEAN country. Singapore wasn't that open to laborers, as much as I know. Taiwan has the most offer of uh, work for factory workers in the Philippines because one reason, Taiwan or the locals here doesn't really know much how to speak and read in English. 
we had a lot of industrial parts right here, industrial companies, and they really wanted to have an employee that's not that expensive, but then could give them, could deliver the kind of work that they want. Most especially, they need someone who can understand English. Right. That's the main reason why they wanted to go to the Philippines and hire as many as Filipinos. And that's why I've, I've told you there's like 60% of the employees here in Taiwan for the factory workers are Filipino because of the language. When they first arrive in Taiwan, what sorts of uh, culture shocks or other difficulties do Filipinos face? The most difficult thing that Filipinos really have in coming in here for the first time is the food because of the smell. Normally, the Filipinos working here, they have their cafeteria. So they would be eating the food, what the companies would prepare. And there are foods with those typical Taiwanese smell, like herbs, which Filipinos don't really accustomed to. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they buy their own food. And uh, the rest, uh, I think it's, it's, it's okay. Well, aside from missing their own families, with the language, they don't have that problem. We're talking about workers. They don't have that much problem because their environment is with the Filipinos. And in terms of uh, labor rights and other practical issues of living here, besides the food, is that something that is an issue with Filipino workers? There are different experiences depending on what kind of job you have right here in Taiwan. So let's start off with the caregiver and the domestic helpers. These population of Filipinos have a little bit of, let's say, sentiment towards the government in Taiwan because they have lower salaries and they don't have that much to enjoy as an employee because they get to work almost 24 hours, especially those caregivers, and then they get to pay for their own food. Not everyone, but a lot of them, they don't have their own beds to sleep, so they have a little problem with privacy. And then during this winter season, you know, some of them, mm -hmm. they, they have to sleep on the floor, which is really very cold. In fact, I even have this farm on Facebook, and I have like almost 2,000 members, and their jobs are domestic helpers and caregivers. And one of their concerns mainly is to have free food, because with that little salary of them, it's like 17,000 until now. That's very and difficult. <laughs> to make a living with. Yeah, exactly. And you have to buy your own food and you have to, like, support your family back home. It makes quite difficult. Yeah. And uh, to share to you, clarify about the, the factory workers, I believe uh, many of the factory workers are happy because it's totally different. They have fixed salary that's, like, 21,000 NT. It's not that high, but then compared to those working as caregivers and domestic helpers, it's a big difference. It's a blow, but close from, to minimum wage, right? Yeah. And then um, aside from that, they have a pay for their overtime. And then the factory workers, they get to have a fixed day off, which those caregivers and domestic helpers don't. So yeah, no, no and, vacation uh, time for those caregivers. Yeah. So you see the gap is quite big. And uh, the factory workers, they have their time to like enjoy. The companies would bring them out and eat out and have some parties and they even have the freedom to like do their own events they can dance they can sing everything but hmm. those domestic helpers and caregivers right here like the filipinos they have limited time to go out since many of their employers wouldn't want them to go out because they don't want to give them day off and you know this would surprise you if they would have a day off their employers would cut off monthly pay they deduct their pay for taking a day off yeah you signed the contract. It's written on the contract, but many of the contracts are written in Mandarin, so they would not understand. What what they do know is the amount of the pay. Right. When they came here, they were surprised, like, they have to pay for the food and everything. So they don't really know what they're signing up for, then? To be very honest, not all of it, because many of the contracts are written in Mandarin, and I always ask, do you see the English translation in Unfortunately, they do have, but maybe didn't read everything because contract would entail you to read a lot of pages, I suppose. Mm, a lot of legal talk. But this kind of tough experience is far from being universal for Filipinos living in Taiwan. Next week, Jem will share her own story about how she came here and talk about the good she sees in Taiwan. We'll hear about solidarity in Taiwan's Filipino community and hear just how much closer Taiwan and the Philippines have become in just the past few years. I'm Curious John, and I'll see you again next week. Thank you.